Hey guys, so today's video we're going to talk about my gold stacking strategy from where it's come from and where it is now. So back in 2018, I bought my first gold. I didn't really know much about gold. I didn't really know a great deal about the coins available. So I just bought a best value one ounce coin and four best value sovereigns. I suppose for a bit of variety, but like I say, I didn't give it a lot of thought. So I waited a little while and the price went up. And so I decided to try and sell some just to see, you know, prove the concept if I could actually sell and buy physical gold and make an actual profit. So the first thing I realized then when I came to sell was that the dealer spreads are obviously something to factor in. So when I bought gold, it was around £900 an ounce. So I paid just over £900 for, you know, each, each ounce, if you like. And when I came to sell, it was around £1,300. So it had risen up quite a bit. But the dealer spread obviously would eat into that. So not everybody is going to buy the lowest premium. You know, some people will get attracted to some fancy stuff. And that is, you know, fair enough. There are, there are aspects of collectors versus uh, stackers. So as a stacker, generally, you are looking to buy as much gold as you can for your money. So in terms of my actual strategy, when I started, I did have that in mind that I wanted to, you know, keep the premiums low. But at the same time, my approach for buying gold is to accumulate for the long term. You know, I'm not looking to sell and trade it in the short term quickly. I don't need it to pay the bills so I can afford to hold it for the long term. And I'm also not buying it with the intention of it like, you know, racing up to the moon or anything. I just want to store part of my long-term savings instead of it being cash in the bank. You know, I want to save some in a physical metal. So with that said, when I first started to buy and, uh, you know, when I really got into buying different pieces and, you know, figuring out what I was into, I started to go to a local coin shop, a local kind of coin dealer, and I basically was buying anything that was fractional, so smaller pieces, anything really from one gram to around a quarter ounce. And I was essentially just buying whatever was there, you know, buying a few pieces at a time on a regular basis and uh, whatever was at a low premium. So I wouldn't tend to buy things that were a higher premium, but I didn't really give much thought into, you know, whether it was a maple, a Krug or whatever it was. So the dealer I was um, working with at the time, he was very accommodating and he was actually giving me some very good prices for small bundles, you know, up to maybe a thousand pounds of fractional gold. So I might get a few one gram bars, a few five gram bars, a few tenths and maybe a quarter ounce or something. And for him, it was just easy to move on, you know, small gold, to someone regular. And uh, it worked quite well. You know, I accumulated a few ounces that way. And when I initially started to stack gold, I never really planned to be, you know, getting up close to 100 ounces or anything. I never thought that far ahead. I, uh, I really just thought about, you know, getting around about sort of three to six ounces. And that would be like a good sort of safety net, you know, a bit of an emergency, like not f well, an emergency fund that wasn't in, in the bank, if, if that's uh, the best way of putting it. So I had the money there and, you know, just it would be good for a rainy day. With the sort of six ounces of gold, I'd be able to then, you know, if something happened to me financially or, or otherwise, I'd be able to keep myself going without, uh, you know, burning through any other cash or having to sell any other assets if, you know, the worst came to worse. And when I got to there, I thought, well, if I had 12 ounces, that would be roughly a year's worth of living expenses. You know, if something terrible happened, then I also obviously, you know, save some cash just to keep paying the bills and things. But if all my cash flow ceased to exist and everything turned to rubbish, you know, if it was a terrible day, real rainy season, then at least I have some gold, you know, that I could uh, call upon if needed. So that was where I sort of started. And after a while, I started to accumulate, you know, some bigger pieces. I started to feel more comfortable buying gold and holding it. So, you know, I started to pick up the one ounce coins and uh, I still wasn't, you know, super sold on the sovereigns, 
Like, I didn't mind them, but I didn't really have any kind of, you know, interest in them. So I'd still pick up a lot of quarter ounce Britannias, one ounce Britannias and things. And, and that's really, really where it went. Now, fast forward a little while, I'm not exactly sure what, what particular time, but I started to basically focus on the sovereigns for some reason. So they're a very good coin to stack in the UK and they're very popular, very liquid. You know, if you go to any coin dealer in England and ask them, you know, what's their preferred coin, I think most of them would probably mention the sovereigns at least. You know, they might be happy with Britannia's, Krugerrands, but a lot will mention the sovereigns. So if you're accumulating, you know, multiple sovereigns, the good thing about them, they're very small, and so everyone can afford them. You know, they're not uh, out of reach for people, and uh, you don't need to be earning mega bucks to pick up a sovereign, you know. They're just under £400 at the moment when I record the video, and, um, you know, it's, it's something that people can buy regularly. So a one-ounce coin, you know, maybe people can't go buy one of those every week, but, you know, it's something you can save up to, something like a, a one-ounce Britannia. But like I say, the sovereigns, you know, they reach a wide market. You know, pretty much everyone can afford them. They have, uh, you know, the option to buy multiple sovereigns. So you can often get them at low premiums, not far off the premium on a one ounce coin. So if it wasn't for that, I probably wouldn't be buying much fractional gold these days. If I couldn't get the sovereigns, you know, I would probably just stick to buying one ounce coins. Uh, but because we have the sovereign in the UK, that's what I tend to buy. Some other potential examples and uh, ideas, you know, you might have the Swiss francs, the French francs and things like that. They're often a low premium way of picking up fractional gold. Um, and if you're in America, you know, I've heard people buying various things, you know, sovereigns, francs and all kinds of things, really. So things like the eagles, things like the maples, things like the philharmonics, kangaroos, etc. You know, they are good options, but they often come at a bit higher premium. So you just need to weigh that up really, whether it's something you want to put a bit more premium into with the hope of getting a bit more premium out at the other end. Now, to the present day, my stacking strategy is really just to keep accumulating gold sovereigns. So when I don't see a good deal on sovereigns, I'll tend to pick up one ounce coins or just something else if it, if it does appear to be a very good deal. So for example, uh, I picked up some Krugerrands, and I picked up some Britannias and some Queen's Beasts in December of 2022. There was a bit of a dip in the spot price and, uh, you know, it made sense just to basically load up a bit. I didn't see any sovereigns for a month or two at a low premium. So I'd not spent as much as I was hoping to. And uh, all these deals kind of came at once. So I ended up loading up on those. Now, moving into the next year, you know, the price went up quite dramatically. So to sell a low premium Krugerrand at effectively spot price, you know, it's a very easy sell. And because I'd bought and spot price had jumped so much in a short time, it was just a very easy sell and, uh, you know, took some profits and just waited for basically some good deals on sovereigns. Now, I got a bit carried away, I would say, on this, on this date run for the sovereigns. So if you've not seen that video, there'll be a link at the end. But um, I got a bit carried away, not, not too carried away, but there was one or two coins that I paid a little bit extra for, you know, small premium, uh, nothing too crazy. There was one I did pay, you know, a, a chunk of premium, like £100 of premium on top, just because it was the last George date that I needed. Uh, I don't think it was this one. This is just one I've got handy to show you. But, you know, I didn't go crazy sort of paying over the odds for every sovereign. I just picked them up when I could and... Just kept accumulating best value and if i could pick a date you know request a date and then i would uh, to get me there so i don't think doing a date run is going to be a good strategy for most people you know it's something to do for a bit of fun but it's not really going to add a lot of value to your stack you know maybe it keeps you interested and maybe to you you know you end up better off because of it but you know it's not something that's going to be uh, on the top of most people's priorities it is, it is a bit of fun, you know, it does help uh, the hobby side of things, but I would just keep accumulating the best value coins that you can, and also good quality ones. So a, an appropriate premium is probably the best way of putting that. You know, if you're buying uh, slightly rough looking coins at a low premium, 
expect to get a low premium back if any but you know that could be the the way you kind of trade that could be the way you operate if you are looking to get high quality coins you're probably going to pay a little bit over the odds sometimes and you know you just need to find the right market to be able to exit in the future so i'm not buying you know super collectible uh, you know fancy examples of coins um i'm currently buying you know decent value but decent quality so somewhere in the middle um, but from time to time you do get some very nice coins in just your best value range so i suppose over time uh, what I would look to do is accumulate, you know, the better value, sorry, the better quality coins. And if I ever needed to kind of trade or sell some of my gold, I would start to sell the lower quality sovereigns, you know, the lower quality coins, and then use that money to either pay for whatever it was I needed, or just start to buy, you know, more of the good quality ones, and uh, eventually ended up with a very good quality stack. So when I say about the quality, you know, we're not talking about buying things that are scratched and dinged and you know x mounted and being kicked down the road just mean that i want to get coins that are you know as clean as possible um is this the one uh this is the one so for example this this shield you know i didn't pay like a collectible premium for it i just bought it a little bit more than the bullion price but it turns out it's like one of the best quality shields i've got and uh, you know very lucky to pick this up so by buying and when things like this do come up, you know, keeping hold of things like this, and then maybe if there's one that's uh, just just like this, you know, it's a it's a good enough bullion quality, you know, I didn't pay a high premium for it, but I could sort of move on things like this that are just not quite as nice and uh, you know clean and shiny if you like, you know, it's just a bit, a bit grubby. Nothing wrong with it. It weighs what it needs to weigh, but. Those are the sort of things I would move on. So that is my gold buying strategy. I'm keen to hear about yours. And the main thing though, is yours the same as when you started or have you evolved and changed over time? So looking forward to talking in the comments. We'll speak soon.